I'm in Chicago. Hi, Tom in Chicago. Hey, Tom in Chicago, what's up? <laughs> Hi, Warren. Warren, I needed your opinion on something. You're ready. I'm ready. Go ahead. All right. Back in the 90s, my partner and I ran a dog sledding business in Colorado. A dog sledding and business? Went, yes, at okay. a ski resort. And okay. We, we gave people rides through the Rocky Mountain National Forest. Okay. And we had, one time, almost 100 Alaskan Huskies and Siberian Huskies. And some people in the town thought that it was animal cruelty to have those dogs harnessed up and run them through, you know, the mountain passes with people in the sled. And our opinion was, I mean, these dogs, the dogs that weren't chosen to run that day were, would cry. You know, they would cry because they wanted to be out there. All right, so let me, let me do this. Let me answer your question as best I can, because I think basically what you're saying to me, am I pro-dog sledding or against dog sledding? Let me answer it two I ways. Think- I have taught dog sledding on Long Island, believe it or not. I am not against dog sledding. I am against the Iditarod. I think it's one of the most abusive things that's still taking place in this country. I love, I mean, New Hampshire, Stowe, Vermont, they have incredible dogs there. That re- and these dogs love pulling the sleds. Let them enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Let them have a great time. Let the people go. But letting a dog run a marathon, the Iditarod, for whatever, 1,000, 1,500, whatever miles it is right now, First of all, it's dangerous. Every year, dogs get injured and die. So I'm very much against the Iditarod, but I'm not against what you guys are doing, short of trails at all. I think it's good for the dogs. The dogs love to do it. And I think working dogs should have the opportunity to do the work they want to do. But again, they shouldn't be overdone like the Iditarod. Agree or disagree with me? What do you think, Jim? Well, yeah, that's, that, that's the reason we had so many dogs, because you know, we, didn't, we didn't run them every day. You know they would have to to rest. Yeah, I know you're absolutely right, yeah. but every every year, I, and I'm so I, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I think that there's nothing wrong if it's yeah. done in that type of way. But I think just like anything okay. else, I think the idea to try people overdo it, and every year dogs die, every year dogs get injured, right. dogs are cold. You know, when they're born, if they're not going to work, they kill them because they don't want to spend the money feeding them. There are some legitimate people up there, but I don't care how legitimate you are, making a dog run through the tundra uh, for a thousand or twelve hundred miles is abusive, no matter how you cut the cake. Yeah, that is rough. You know, especially if if they're not really getting a a drug up up to uh, through Anchorage, you know, to Nome. You know, that's how it started. Yeah, no, yeah, you know, now, you know, it's amazing what God is. You know, I'm not the most religious person in the world, but, you know, God created snowmobiles. God created helicopters. God created airplanes. We no longer have to use dog trails to get our dogs to go 12, 14, 1,500 miles across the tundra. Those times are over, you know. Uh, We don't take, we don't, when I moved from California to New York, I didn't come by wagon train. Okay, I flew. The times, they were changing. And we got to change one. So there's no need. I find that abusive. So what type of, you have all these Huskies. Now, where do you train them? Well, um, this is back in the 90s. Oh, okay. So you're not doing it anymore. This is, you know, this is back in Crested Butte, Colorado. But I always, I mean, people would always comment, oh, look at these. And we had a dog house for every one of them with straw. And normally, I mean, it's very cold in Colorado. It could be 30 below. And the dogs would usually sleep on top of the dog house. You know, they didn't, they, they were never cold. They were just. Uh, yeah, but you're right. But there are, some do- there are some dogs like that. If you give most of them a choice between sleeping on my king size bed or sleeping on type of a dog house where it's 30 below, chances are they're on top of my pillow. Just, just a guess on oh. my. <laughs> By the way, but I do believe you. I, you know, having worked in Europe for many years, I do understand that certain breeds, like the uh, the Alaskan Malamute or the the Siberian Husky or the Alaskan Husky or the Samoyed uh, or many of the other northern breeds, uh, really, really do enjoy being outside in the cold weather. But there are extremes where they should be taken inside. Even wild animals look for shelter when the weather is really, really bad. Anyway, great call. So, what type of pets do you have right now? Oh, I have a. All I have is a cat. 
<laughs> All you have is a cat. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you yeah. on hold, and I'm going to send you a great treat for your cat. You sound like a great guy. Some Kitty Lickies. Kitty Lickies by Lucy Ped on its way to you, and I appreciate that phone call. Thank you for calling. And, and I meant that seriously. Uh, you know, there are things you can do. I have no problem with, uh, with dogs used in, in sled dog racing uh, as long as it's uh, 50 miles, 60 miles, even 100 miles. But when you're talking what they do with the Iditarod, it's abusive as far as I'm concerned. 